So both in the gray matter, um, in the nerve cell bodies and the dendritic tree I showed you, and in the white matter, you need constant energy supply to the glutamate hoover to prevent the cell damage which causes mental or physical handicap. Now, of course, these diseases cause lots of anguish, and just to give you an illustration of this, I want to read out an email which I was sent. It says, Dr. Atwell, you've been recommended to me as someone who might help me. I'm 57-year-old male, left paralyzed after a stroke 22 years ago. Can you or your colleagues help lessen my paralysis? I can travel to you and pay for treatment. This is Paul from South Carolina. Any response or direction appreciated. But tragically, there is no cure for the majority of these diseases at present. And so the bottom line is that if we want to treat these diseases, which are going to become more and more important as the population ages, then we need to do more animal research of the sort that's done in the Flory Institute, for example, um, to address these problems of the human brain that are caused by the brain losing its power supply. So I want to sum up what I've told you today. Brains use lots of energy. They evolved to be able to do this by virtue of the fact that the gut became more efficient. They use all of that energy on electrical signaling, as Frankenstein's monster showed us, and voltage changes moving along these cells are what we think with. So all of our thoughts are generated by this. The Indians and the snail showed you the importance of this electrical signaling, and Anakin Skywalker showed you that the energy to power it comes from these mitochondria or midichlorians which came into our cells two billion years ago. By looking at the energy supply to these mitochondria, you can image our thoughts in the living brain. And of course, if you cut off the energy supply to the brain, as Superman showed, very bad things happen. Thank you for listening to me, and may your brain power stay with you as long as possible. David, thank you. I'm sure you'll agree with me that was just a tremendous uh, lecture and clearly uh, we should learn more from movies than we do at the moment. We, do, we need to focus and learn uh, as we watch. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're very fortunate tonight in having the nephew of Kenneth Meyer, uh, Carillo Gantner, here with us tonight, who's going to say a few words on behalf of the Meyer family and in particular give the Kenneth Meyer Medal. Uh, as you may know, uh, Carullo is well known already and has been a significant figure in the cultural fabric of our community, having made major contributions in both the arts and philanthropy. Ladies and gentlemen, Carullo Gantner. Professor Donan, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of my cousin Martin Meyer and his fellow trustees of the Kenneth Meyer bequest, it's my happy responsibility to thank Professor Atwell for his delivery of the 15th Kenneth Meyer lecture, Brain Power. Uh, as you just heard, I'm Carillo Gantner and, and a very proud nephew uh, of Ken Meyer. I share Ken's passion for the arts and for our engagement with Asia, but somehow I missed out on the gene for scientific inquiry. Two of my sons have the gene, and Martin has this gene, but uh, he's otherwise detained, uh, stimulating more brain cells, snorkeling with humpback whales in Tonga. That's brain power for you. Plagiarism in academic research and writing is a serious offence, so let me confess up front that when Martin asked me to fill in for him tonight, I agreed on the basis that he would assist me by guiding me in what to say. So I'm happy re to report that he's been as good at as his word, which means, in essence, that I'm only as good as his words. The purpose of the Kenneth Meyer Lecture is to attract to Australia some of the world's outstanding academics and to give the Flory Neuroscience Institute's community and the general public an exposure to a level of intellectual debate 
uh, and science that is not always available in Australia. With this wonderful lecture today, Professor Apple has joined an esteemed alumni of Kenneth Meyer, Meyer lecturers, including amongst others, James Watson, Eric Kandel, Sherwood Rowland, Colin Blakemore, Susan Greenfield, and Peter Agre. Given the focus of the Flory, it's not surprising that most of the lecturers, including Professor Atwell, have been neuroscientists, and all have been truly outstanding leaders in their specific field of research. Excuse me. As you've heard, Professor Atwell's work is on the signaling between the neurons and glial cells, how the brain's energy supply is controlled, and in turn, how that determines the computational power of the brain. I have to confess I had to use Wikipedia to check what a glial cell is, which of course you all know are those cells that support and protect the neurons in the brain. In engineering terms that Martin would be familiar with, Professor Apple's work is focused on the utility infrastructure of the brain, the understanding of which has important implications in areas such as stroke, cerebral palsy and spinal cord injury, as we've just seen. The Flory Neuroscience Institute is under, undertaking outstanding research into brain function. As a couple of examples, Professor David Howells is investigating how cultured brain cells respond to the stresses of a lack of oxygen and glucose. This is an, enables him to understand how the brain may be protected from a sudden loss of blood supply and develop new drugs for treatment of patients with stroke. Professor Stephen Petru studies the energy dependent electrical behavior of cells when their surface structure is altered by the introduction of different ion channels, thus gaining a better understanding of the mechanisms of specific forms of epilepsy. The Flory is currently entering a new and exciting phase of its development. The co-location of the Flory Neuroscience Institutes, or the FNI, with the Mental Health Research Institute and with the University of Melbourne's team of neuroscientists will create the fifth largest centre of neuroscience research in the world, with over 800 scientists working on dozens of research themes, including epilepsy, Parkinson's disease, stroke, multiple sclerosis and addiction. The FNI has two new research buildings, one on the Austin Hospital campus in Heidelberg and the other on the University of Melbourne's Parkville campus are now complete. The Austin building was officially opened this past June and the Parkville building is due to be opened shortly in this month. The completion of these two buildings and the coming together of four neuroscience institutes plus the University of Melbourne marked the culmination of seven years of hard work by all concerned, and Martin wanted me specifically to pass on his thanks to the many people involved. He looks forward to seeing you all at the opening in two weeks' time. Over the past couple of years, the FNI has appointed a number of exciting new scientific teams to fill the new spaces, including those dedicated to the study of cell stem cells in collaboration with the Universities of Melbourne, Monash, Queensland and the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute to establish the Australian Stem Cell Centre. The Flory has also attracted high field MRI imaging experts in collaboration with the University of Melbourne to take advantage of the world class facilities being developed at the Parkville and Austin campuses. Talented young scientists to lead research in understanding of emotions and addiction have also been recruited to expand the capacity in areas where outstanding research is already being undertaken. Of course, all this new activity costs money and while I certainly wouldn't be so tasteless as to do a pitch here, Martin would. He's asked me to take this opportunity once again to advertise the fact that despite generous grants from Commonwealth and state governments and donations from private philanthropy, the FNI has not yet completed its fundraising mission for the new scientific teams and is still looking to raise multiple millions. So should anyone wish to consider assisting FNI or need to be persuaded about the benefits, you can contact Professor Jeff Donan who'd only be too happy to meet 
with you. These developments at the Flory would certainly have pleased Ken Meyer. He was passionate about medical research, although his point of view was that of a scientifically unsophisticated layperson. What kept his sparkling attention and enthusiasm for so many decades and led to his involvement in the Flory was the excitement of new discoveries and the belief that these would make a difference to the health and well-being of the wider community. It's a passion very much aligned with that of tonight's distinguished lecturer, Professor Atwell. Would you please join me in thanking Professor Atwell? Thank you. Hold on. It's now, uh, it's now my happy duty to uh, give the Kenneth Meyer medallion, and I just hope I open it right way up. There we are. Uh, in commemoration of his delivery of the 15th Kenneth Meyer Lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's heavy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. thank you for coming. That concludes tonight's official proceedings. On behalf of Martin Meyer and the trustees of the Kenneth Meyer bequest, I thank you all for coming here tonight and look forward to seeing you at future Kenneth Meyer Lectures. Thank you.